Alright, in three, two, one. Hey everybody and welcome to the Geeky Grind. That's right, all of our nerd content has been rebranded as the Geeky Grind. Uh, for today's episode, we are going to show you how to paint a Primaris Chaplain on bike in my Death Watch color scheme that I like to use. So, let's go through those paints. We've got Black Templar Contrast, some Abaddon Black for fixing any mistakes on that black armor, uh, some Rhinox Hide, some Mephiston Red, Wraithbone, Administorum Gray, Vallejo's White Aluminum, Ushanti Bone, and some Retributor Armor. Yeah, uh, I like to put a lot of my paints over into dropper bottles. Uh, the contrast I like to leave in. Uh, I've got a little bit left in my uh, Retributor Gold bottle, but I gotta get ready to transfer this pot over. Same thing with my Abaddon Black. I just couldn't find those dropper bottles. They're kind of like lost in the Tupperware dish that I keep everything in. But those are the paints you're going to need. The good thing is I've got a nice little list of them somewhere here on the screen for you to go through. There's also the list will be down in the comment section below. But let's start off. Let's let's dive in. Let's start watching me paint this mini together. So I started with a Zenithal Prime, and here I'm just putting on all the silver details. Uh, like to put the silver on first before I do the black, uh, because anywhere that I've accidentally like gotten some flecks of the silver paint, uh, a little splatter might give me give that silver a little bit of a shine in some of those spots. Uh, if and it will be a dull downshine. It will. It won't like this silver is nasty uh, at times. It kind of does splatter spray if you don't have a lot of very fine brush control. Uh, notice that when I painted a bunch of sisters tanks that I had going on, they had like sprays everywhere of silver, and I was just like, Ugh. so want to try to get that metal down first as much as I can and then paint over so it kind of hides and dulls. That's also why I uh, brought in the uh, Abaddon Black. If you've got any spots of silver in this step that get onto the places you want to keep black, you can keep them black uh, by just going back in and touching those up. So we moved over to the blacks at this point. Uh, this is where I like having the Xenophil Prime because I can get a really good transition. I can get a lot more contrast out of the contrast paint if there are these white spots on the mini as well as the dark spots. That black is just going to be a deeper, richer black wherever it's black. And you know, once this dries, you're definitely going to get on the sharper edge of the lines. There is going to be a, that translucentness that contrast paint gives you. But I just feel like this allows for some more, some more natural contrast going from those lighter spots down into the black. It just overall makes it look better. So give yourself, even if you're just using, even if you're using contrast paints, use a Zenithal highlight. Don't go with that basic paint everything, that nice white color, that off white, and then go for it. You want, you want to, you want, you want some, you want some tr nice transitions, some cool, you know, blends without actually doing blends, then contrast over a Zenithal highlight is definitely my way that I love going for it. Um, so while I'm getting this slapped on here, I just want to talk about the whole fact of like, I know this is considered to be one of the best minis and like it's the best HQ in all of the Space Marine Codex. But I think the place where it really shines is in the Army of Renown for the Death Watch with their whole kill team specializations, the Beacus and Jealous, where basically you can teleport this guy straight up the, well, you don't teleport this guy. You run this guy straight up into your opponent's front lines, and then you teleport another army that you've given a, you've used his chaplain uh, plus one to hit bonus on, so that everybody's wounding on twos. They've also gotten from a captain or uh, somebody else, they're getting the whole reroll ones or the full reroll. Uh, well, you just need reroll ones. 
give him a reroll one aura, plus one to hit, and then you pop that Exterminus uh, three CP stratagem that that kill team gets, and everything's hitting on twos, rerolling ones, and you're just and the hail of bolter fire you can get out of these is just nuts. Uh, even in close combat ends up being pretty awesome if you can actually um, I like to kid him out where his two litanies is that he, I actually get, make him the uh, the oh the upgraded chapter master so he actually knows like three so I can be like all right he's getting plus one to hit for shooting he's getting plus two to his charge roll this is an aura and he's gonna get the whole reroll in in comp in melee thing going on so you can just like totally just like charge him up give a bunch of bonuses onto an onto an army and then just basically be like all right you guys teleport in and shoot 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 and then next turn you move him over somewhere else you teleport another you use either the teleport stratagem that you put somebody in reserve or you just have some people that have been running up the beat you know advancing up the board getting close and he's just like, ah, everybody's gonna start dealing massive damage because I'm giving you plus one to hit. So, nah, it's it's been a lot of fun playing that. All right, so here I'm just coming back in and finishing up a bunch of the silvers that uh, I didn't get done or I just wanted to touch up. Uh, this is the stuff I wanted to make sure that I could easily uh, cover that sil cover any black that might have dabbed onto the arm. I wanted to have it be that nice uniform uh, silver of the Death Watch. Let's get my. I like painting these little uh, the little exhaust ports, the thrusters for the jetpacks. I like painting them all silver. It's a little touch I like to do on all of mine. Just makes the backpacks not stand out a little bit, but you know, not kind of like fade into the back of the model. Yeah, we're just gonna go over and touch up any areas of silver that might need to be a little done, a little stuff that I might have missed the first time around. Uh, also, these places that have like armor panels above them, if you get a little silver nicks onto that side where the paint's kind of where the black paint is, that just looks like battle damage. You know, you can go in and clean it up if you want, but I like to just yeah. Here I'm coming in with that Abaddon black and touching that back up. A little bit of that silver uh, spilled down, didn't get my brush wicked off enough. Right, coming over here, getting the handle of the gun that's sitting in. Dab on the iconography of it. Picking out some of the bolts on the front tire. Yeah, that's looking good, that's looking sexy. All right. Next up, after we got all the blacks and the silvers done, is we're gonna come in with the Ushanti bone and start picking out all the papers, all the parchment. We're gonna get in here with a nice, uh, I believe that's a five zero uh, brush I'm using. Really small tip brush, really delicate area. Just wanna layer in. Make sure you don't hit any of the other parts that you want to keep a different cut, you know, any of those silver chains. Probably would have wanted to actually paint that first. You always want to try to paint from the uh, from the inside out. Uh, I'm a little bit of a, I like to do, I like to do metals first. That way I can swap out paint water and uh, hide any metal mistakes. So a lot of this was going to have a lot of silver areas. So I did that silver first. Looking back, I probably would have done the book first. Um, here I'm going over the purity seals. Yeah, I like to use Shanti Bone is a really good, it's a really good parchment color. And that's why I use it a lot for uh, purity seals and paper anytime I'm doing that. For the, the skull parts, actually, I'm using the, that's the, where we're putting the wraith bone in. Again, we're working that. You know, I want to work the smallest brush you got, because if you, an iron halo and the acrosius are really right in your way. 
I'm doing this, getting the bones up on the acrosius. I'm using basically painting all in the same direction. I'm not going back and up. I'm not getting in between. I'm just kind of over brushing. That way I can leave the shadows in those ribs as best I can. Also the shadows in the skull. I want to have those still be pretty dark. That way it gives some natural contrast. It's kind of like a, a bit like a dry brushing process, but uh, a lot more wet for this. <clears throat> right, looking good, fam. Looking good. Right. Now we're just going to come in and do that same downward over brushing effect on the uh, bones on his uh, chest plate armor, those rib bones. Just coming in, just giving him a good, just hitting the tops of those, that, that outermost surface, leaving the recessed areas black, giving it that good pop. Good pop. All right. Now, we're go, moving on to our Rhinox hide. Getting the, uh, it's like a map scroll case. Thing he's got on the back of the bike by his seat. I guess here's his spare sermons in there. Uh, also getting all of the leather details on the acrosius with this. Uh, I like, like I have two browns that I like to use for leathers. I like to use uh, Rhinox Hag and Mornfang Brown. Uh, it's really nice to use the, the Mornfang Brown as a highlight color for Rhinox Hide. Gives you a little two-step painting process. But on this model, I just used the Morphine Brown because I wanted for a, I was going for a darker, gringier, dirtier look. So I'm just gonna cover the top of this book. Yeah, cover his little hymnal. I'll make it nice and simple. And you could go could go nuts with it a little bit. You could add some more details, some more uh, ornateness to the uh, details on it. But uh, I like this simple. He's a simple. My chapel. My chaplain is a simple man. He's a simple man of the emperor. All right. Edit this, and we're gonna come back for the next color. All right, yeah, got to get these purity seals over on this side. I want to come back uh, because I thin my paints. Uh, sometimes this uh, Ushanti bone doesn't really stick in one quote coat, so I like to come back over. Let's do a second one in these areas. All right, for the purity seals, this is where our Mephisto and Red is coming in. Just giving them a nice little brushing down. It's the red versus the silver, and also the red versus the black. It really pops out, makes those stand out. All right, on to Retributor Armor for our golds. Uh, doing these skulls on the handlebars, also doing the, the detail bits of the Acrosius. I really want that Acrosius to be a focal point of the armor. Well, focal point in the mini, that really that gold pop against all this black. So, let's go on. I'm just giving this a good brushing, trying to stick in. Get it good. And not really worried too much. I had to go back in and add some more because my paint was a little thin. Again, metallics and dropper bottles are, uh, they do end up being a little thin. So it does take a couple extra coats. All right, we're just gonna hit this iron halo. I know an iron halo should be, you know, metal color, but there's already so much silver on this model that I wanted, I want some gold to really uh, accentuate the model. I mean, it's black, so you know, black and gold can't go wrong. 
with those color pairings. Um, but yeah, just be careful working around that head. You don't want to get any of that gold on that helmet or else you're going to have to repaint the helmet. Also doing uh, gold details, the, the trim of his shoulder pad as well as some of the other key parts on his arm really break up that silver and make it more interesting make it so it doesn't just kind of like all blend together as one big lump of silver the Indominus patch on his arm getting all that All right, let's uh, let's trim this piece out, and we'll come back for the yeah. One last thing, you don't want to miss that golden skull on the handlebars, along with the little tassel. But you're missing it because my hand is in the complete shot. All right, let's trim that out too. Then we're going to trim all this stuff out because we can get all right I had a little bit of a problem here ended up having some gold that I was trying to do on that uh, halo and skull that was just too much it was too all over the place so that's why I take my Abaddon black black it out and yeah you just paint over it of course it's one of those nice recessed shadowed areas so you don't have to go back in and try to recreate the highlight you're just black it and go on to the next bit all right at this point we're putting on the wash I'm doing a brown wash over all of my golds but you can see that clearly uh, I had actually missed a step of going in and uh, painting the rock that the bike is sitting on I painted that with the administrator gray to give me a nice gray rock texture and you'll actually notice that in the when I showed you the mini at the beginning of the video and in the slide for this video, it has a different base. Uh, the original base was just uh, my texture paint that I usually use for this my homemade mud brown. It's just a mix of uh, sawdust, sand, acrylic uh, craft paint, as well as PVA glue and a little bit of water. But yeah, um, yeah, and it's not only the golds that we're giving this brown wash to. We're also giving it to any of the bone colors. Uh, and parchments just to give them a more aged weather look. Uh, this is why I like to use uh, Wraith Bone and Ushanti Bone uh, to differentiate my different uh, papers. Uh, Wraith Bone is nice for when it gets that brown wash, gives you a nice brown, and Ushanti goes a little bit further into a really, a really aged yellowy paper color. So Definitely want to vary it up a bit. Now we're applying our black wash, and we're gonna. I've already got enough contrast in all of my black paints, so all I'm really doing is just going over anything that's uh, silver in color, uh, just giving that a little aging up, a little dirtying up. I'm also going to make sure I get. And I'm okay if uh, if some of that black spills over onto some the black wash spills over to the black that's just gonna look like dirt and grime and little gunky areas you know everything doesn't stay clean in the future everything gets dirty so don't be afraid of having some overslop if you do have some big pools you can come back and wick it away with a dry brush and when I did this base I also applied a heavy amount of uh, wash to the base it will normally dry a really dry brown uh, really light brown and it'll look like really dry mud, so putting some black uh, into that will end up uh, darkening the shadows. Also, give it a more wet, muddy look. But yeah, uh, just dab it in here, leaving a few areas dry to give some variation to the dirt. Just making sure I've got everybody some places I want to put a little more black in. Uh, trying to get the tires looking good, but I think overall, yeah. She's looking banging. 
ready for the tabletop. Just gonna let that dry. Oh yeah, I want to put some more on the book book to uh, pick out some of those details on it. Yeah, but there you go. That is how I painted my Ernest Chapel. Now when I went back in and I rebased this, the reason why I rebased it was playing in a tournament, and I wanted I didn't want him to have the brown base. I wanted him to actually match into the rest of my army. So all I did was I glued down some aquarium rocks with some PV, a crap, PVA glue and uh, just smeared that all over the base, dropped down some big aquarium rocks and then filled in the rest of the area by just dropping down some sand, gave it a shake off, let it dry for a few hours. And I went over to the sand and rocks with uh, some craft neon purple paint, let that dry and then just loaded up some white gesso onto one of my dry brushing brushes and then just uh, gave it that snowy Zenos uh, look that I love. It's becoming my new favorite. I think I'm going to leave the Black Templars and the Crimson Fist to be that type of base and I think the Death Watch which he's slated to be Death Watch but I also went in and added you can see on the shoulder pad I made it some yellow so he is he is both Death Watch and Imperial Fist, so I can field him with my Imperial Fist army. So I'm definitely going to do the Xenos ground texture uh, on my Death Watch. Go back through and rebase all of those models. Uh, great thing about using PVA glue for your bases, this is a little free bonus tip, is that you can actually soak them in hot water for a couple hours and that PVA glue uh, texture will just come right off. Uh, you can, it even happens with uh, the way I've done here where I just paint and PVA glue over so you can swap out your bases for whatever you want but I think I've I think I've found my base of choice and I, this is going to stay for a while and yeah that's all I got if you've enjoyed this episode please uh, don't forget to like share subscribe all those things to let YouTube know that we're doing a good job and I'll see you next time on the geeky grind Peace.